so let us come to our 27th class on tp application of fourier equation application of fourier equation today's class Fourier equation can be utilized to the practical cases such as the heat conduction in the case of plane wall and how this principle that the heat conduction in a plane wall can be successfully applied to design the furnace, to design the refractory lining of the furnace and all sort of design aspects can be used. Second, we will try to understand how the Fourier heat conduction equation in the three dimensional cases can be utilized to cylindrical and expensive. Here, I would like to emphasize that by using the Fourier heat conduction equation to three dimensional cases, there may be two types of drop cases. One case, one type of drop case is well, there is no heat conduction. That means there is no chemical process or reaction taking place inside the volume element. But another case may be that the chemical process or chemical reaction is going on. This lies to the generation or evolution of heat in the volume element. So these cases are called the heat generation. In uh, cases with heat generation, and the first type of process is called as heat transfer with no heat generation inside. So, let us try to go through the aspects of the heat transfer in the system when there is no heat generation. So, let us take a plane wall, take the case of a plane wall, plane wall. the plane the wall with no heat generation. This principle can be effectively used to establish an analogy between the heat flow and the electrical circuit. That if you would like to design a furnace in order to determine the relative thickness of all the refractive material which has been imposed in the furnace to restrict the heat transfer rate, then how, what should be the thicknesses of the such refractory layer should be in the furnace, that can be easily determined from this undergoing concept. So, let us take the clear case of a plane wall with no heat generation. So, let us suppose this is the plane wall of thickness L. Let this distance be L. This is the point at which the temperature is T1. At this point, temperature is T2. Then this heat flow is taking place in this direction. And let us suppose the quantity of heat energy flowing, that is the Q, to the no heat generation, that means the same quantity of heat will be supposed to flow through the system. So, as shown in the figure, shown in the figure, there is a plane wall. plane wall with T1 and T2 at surface temperatures 
Sub system switches. On its okay. Let K is the thermal conductivity. Let K is the thermal conductivity. Material of plane wall. Let K is the thermal conductivity of material of the plane wall and doesn't vary with respect to temperature. Doesn't vary with respect to temperature. So, the Fourier equation is alpha del square t is equal to 0, that is the del square t is equal to 0. So, the d by 2 t by d by x 2 plus d by 2 x, d by 2 by d by 2 t by d by by 2 plus d by 2 d t by d by z 2, that should be equal to 0. And this reduces to x2 equal to 0 for one dimensional case, one dimensional case assuming, assuming heat is flowing along, it is flowing along the x direction only, along the x direction only. So, if I am assuming that the heat is flowing along the x direction only, then this part of the derivative can be changed to the normal derivative. So, this d 2 x d 2 t by d x 2 equal to 0. Now, the solution of the differential equation number 1 with respect to the pertaining boundary condition will give the temperature profile for this thing. temperature profile for the present case. So, let us proceed in order to solve this question number 1 using the boundary conditions 2 and 3.
so d two t by d x two equal to zero, or we can write d upon d x d t by d x that should be equal to zero, or we can write d d t upon d x that should be equal to zero. Integrating this equation, we can write d t upon d x that is equal to c one. Or d t is equal to c one d x. Again, integrating this equation, we will obtain the equation for the temperature profile as c one x plus c two. Let it be equal to four. Now, using the boundary condition two and three, so x is equal to zero, t is equal to t one. So we can write t one. Is equal to so the first the second integration constant which can be evaluated here is the t one is equal to c two. Now x is equal to l, so t is equal to t two. The boundary conditions are basically used for the evaluation of the integration constant or the constant which. Are generated in order to solve a particular differential equation. So t is equal x equal to l, then t is equal to t2. So we can write t2 is equal to c1 x equal to l plus t t2 that is equal to c1. So the value of c1 comes as t2 minus t1 divided by l. So the value of the second integration constant will be arrived at this. So from equation number four, from equation number four, the temperature profile has the expression T is equal to T two minus T one by L into X plus T one. That can be written as T one minus T1 minus T2 divided by L into x. So this is the expression for the temperature profile. Expression for expression for temperature. profile now 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 dt upon dx Evaluate this quantity d t upon d x. That is equal to. This is the constant so zero. This is also a constant quantity. So minus t one minus t two divided by l. And differential coefficient of x equal to one. That is equal to t two minus t one divided by l. This is equal to t minus t one divided by l. Hence, Q, that is the heat flow rate, that will be equal to minus k into a into d t upon d x. That should be equal to minus k into a into t two minus t one by l. That can be written as. You can write Q equal to T one minus T two divided by L upon K A. Let it be equation number six. Now the equation number six. When you will start comparing with the electrical circuit, 
if you start comparing with the electrical circuit then in terms of electrical circuit and its electrical analog can be arrived at let us suppose this is the T1 temperature this end is the T2 temperature in order to flow the heat energy from a higher temperature to lower temperature from T1 to T2 it must have to pass through a resistance as you call the thermal resistance that is L upon K A is it not how from where this this thing I mean uh, arrived it is arrived from its analogous electrical circuit that let us suppose there are two points at the potential V1 another point is at potential V2 and this is the resistance that is electrical resistance then then the let us suppose this is the i amount of current that is flowing here the q is the amount is flowing so i is equal to given as v2 minus v1 sorry v1 minus v2 v1 minus v2 divided by r whereas in this case corresponding to the i the result we have the quantity q that should be equal to t1 minus t2 divided by l upon k when these, t these two circuits t2 and analogous to each other the corresponding quantities can be determined on the electrical ground that this quantity stands for the potential difference that is equivalent to v1 minus v2 t1 minus t2 divided by the resistance this is electrical resistance and this is called the thermal resistance so l by k stands for the thermal resistance so visiting equation number 6 so visiting equation number 6 Question number six. Electrical circuit analogy can be established as per as per the following table. as per the following table here I am putting the serial number another column we are putting the parameters this parameter with respect to the heat flow system and the parameter with respect to electrical circuit system number 1 is the first parameter is the potential difference the value of the potential difference will be equivalent to T1 minus T2 in the heat flow system potential difference divided by resistance is the current flow so this is the potential difference in the heat flow system and in the case of electrical circuit system the potential difference will be v1 minus v2 another is the flow parameters here flow parameter is q here in the case of electrical circuit the flow parameter is i third one is the resistance 
third one is the resistance in the case of heat flow system the resistance is l upon k into a and in this case That is the Q is the heat flow rate, that is the thermal potential difference, potential difference divided by resistance. Using this electrical analogy, using this electrical analogy, the thickness of the different different refractory layers in the case of industrial furnaces can be evaluated. Now, let us take the example of, so the heat energy is and reaching the surface. So, if I am con considering the con convective heat flow, then Q convective, that should be equal to H into A into temperature difference that is the delta T, that may be written as delta T divided by 1 upon H A. So, here L by K A is a conductive resistance, L by K A is a conductive resistance, whereas this quantity 1 by H A, this is called convective resistance. So, keep in mind that utilizing these equations in this manner, the potential difference divided by resistance, that should be the current, that is the flow quantity, so this is stand for the convective resistance. So, let us try to apply this electrical analogy to arrive at the thickness of the different different refractory layers in the furnace. Take the composite wall. Let us take the cons consider the let us consider the case of the composite wall. This is the temperature of the ambient air. The convective heat transfer coefficient is H A. This reaches the point with the temperature T1, heat T x plus, this is this temperature T2, T3, further, a temperature further increases and another temperature T4, that if we enter again the ambient air, let us suppose so, T B is the temperature here and H B is the conductive heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So, now let us consider, this is the case of a complete number 2, this number 2 it is, this is the composite one. this thickness is L1, let us suppose this thickness is L2 and let us suppose this thickness is L3. Let us consider a composite wall. L1, L2, L3 as K 
thicknesses of different let us suppose different refractory layers having k1 k2 k3 and the and respective thermal conductivity okay then and also the t and t b are ambient air temperatures this air temperatures should be equal to and t b for but for the present case as, a, as an assumption that we have assumed that the temperature of air before the entry of the heat energy to the composite wall and once the heat energy leaves this composite wall this these two ambient air are different temperatures this is an assumption c and t b are the ambient air temperatures that is assumed okay so the value of r a that should be equal to how much 1 upon s into a as i told you earlier the value of r 1 that is equal to l 1 upon k 1 into a cross the area is same for the cases so a is the cross sectional area of wall is u to be constant r1 equal to l2 l1 by k1 a r2 is equal to l2 upon k2 a r3 equal to l3 upon k3 a and rb that is equal to 1 upon h a h b a here you can write h a so the equivalent resistance so the equivalent resistance the resistance are in series so that will be equal to 1 upon h a a plus this quantity plus this quantity plus this once we have obtained the value of the r equivalent then the correspondingly the heat flow rate from the furnace can be designed depending upon the situation and the demand of the situation you can easily assign you can easily design and fix the value of l1 l2 and l3 subject to the condition that a is known k1 k2 k3 are known H A and H B are known. Once H A is known, you can easily evaluate. You can easily arrive at the value of the thickness of the different refractive layers required in a furnace in order to have a reasonable heat flow rate. So this is the practical application of the equation. Another case that is the case number three. in this case we will consider a cylindrical system with no heat generation so the last case in today's class is a cylindrical system without a heat generator we going to discuss in today's class a cylinder without any heat generation that means we will apply the general heat conduction fourier equation to the cylindrical system in which there is no 
heat generation that is taking place. So, the Fourier heat conduction equation Fourier heat conduction equation in the radial system radial system can be given as So, if I am assuming that the temperature is lying in, in the in the radial direction only then this equation can be given as d 2 t upon d r 2 plus 1 upon r d t upon d r that we are, we are transforming this partial derivative into the complete derivative. Multiplying this equation by r throughout we can write r d 2 t by d r 2 plus d t upon d r that should be equal to 0. D upon dr, r g t upon dr, that should be equal to zero, or we can write d r g t upon dr, that should be equal to zero, writing r g t upon dr, that is equal to c one, or d r upon r, that can be written as. upon C1 by dt or dt can be given as C1 dr upon r integrate this equation again t is equal to C1 ln r plus c it is this is number now taking the boundary conditions that the boundary conditions are to T2 at R is equal to R2. Keeping these two boundary conditions in view, the equation number 1 can be expressed as T1 that is equal to C1 L1 
एल एन आर वन प्लस सी टू एंड सी टू इक्वल टू सी वन एल एन आर टू प्लस सी टू सो सी वन माइनस सी टू दैट में भी गिवन है सी वन एल एन आर वन बाय आर टू सो द वैल्यू ऑफ द फर्स्ट इंटीग्रेशन कॉम्पोनेंट सी वन ड्राइव से इंटरनल रेडियस दिस इज दूर वेल्यू ऑफ दिस आर वन द टेम्परेचर हि इज टी वन एंड दिस इज द आउटर रेडिया आउटर रेडियस टेम्परेचर हि द रेडियस इज आर टू हियर इज द टी टू आई एम कंसिडरिंग ए इन बिटवीन रेडियस आर एंड द टेम्परेचर इज टी हियर फॉर द प्रेस केस it means r1 is less than r 
is less than R2. Keeping this in view, you have to arrange the this equation that is temperature of equation about the temperature profile. So it can be written as P1 ln R upon R2 plus T2 ln R1 upon R divided by ln R1 by R2 that can be written as P1 ln R2 upon R with minus sign plus T2 ln R upon R1 with minus sign minus sign will be there with both the terms divided by minus ln R2 by R1 changing this ln R1 by R2 that is equal to minus ln R2 by R1. So, so the expression for the temperature flux a uh, temperature profile that will be equal to T is equal to P1 ln R2 upon R plus T2 ln R upon R1 making all the quantities positive divided by ln R2 upon R1. profile. Now, we should evaluate the heat flux that is the heat flow rate over time. So, our next task will be determine the heat flow rate for new time. equal to q equal to minus k into a into d t upon d r definitely the heat flux that is heat will be leave inner cylinder that is the cylinder of radius r 1 leave the cylinder having the radius r 2 that is the external diameter from internal to external diameter the heat flow will take place in that delta diagram. So, the value of the d t by d r needs to be evaluated at a point r is equal to r 1. Now, taking the help of this equation that r d t upon d r that should be equal to c 1. So, the value of d t by d r that should be equal to c 1 upon r. So, the value of d t upon d r at the value r is equal to r 1 that is equal to c 1 upon r 1. Also, the value of a at the value r is equal to r 1 for the cylindrical system that should be equal to 2 pi r l. The value of r is equal to r 1 that should be equal to 2 pi r 1 into l. So, expression for heat plus q is equal to minus k into 2 pi r 1 l and the value of this d t by d r that is equal to c 1 upon r 1. This r 1 r 1 we get cancel out that will be equal to minus 2 pi k l c 1. Now, put the value of c 1 here. The value of c 1 that should be equal to that should be equal to minus 2 pi k l and the value of c 1 is c 
वन माइनस टी टू डिवाइडेड बाय एल एन आर वन अपॉन आर टू ओके सो दैट विल बी इक्वल टू टू पाई के एल इनटू टी टू माइनस टी वन डिवाइडेड बाय एल एन आर वन अपॉन आर टू दैट मे बी गिवन एज दैट मे बी गिवन एज टी टू माइनस टी वन टी टू माइनस टी वन डिवाइडेड बाय एल एन आर वन अपॉन आर टू Divided by two pi k l, that is written as t1 minus t2 because t1 is greater than t2. So making all the points equal, it is so minus minus that is equal to ln r2 by r1 divided by two pi k. Put in the electrical circuit analog here also. You can say you can say here. Can say here that the Q is equal to potential difference divided by thermal resistance in the case of cylinder. So that is equal to T1 minus T2 divided by the value of the resistance in the cylinder system, and then R2 by R1 divided by 2 pi K. Similar lines, the thermal resistance. Hence, the thermal Thermal resistance in this cylindrical system can be quantified as can be quantified as R thermal in cylindrical system that should be equal to. Ln R2 upon R1 divided by 2 pi k. In the case of sphere as well, in the case of sphere, you can describe it to yourself as an assignment. Resistance in the case of a sphere that should be equal to R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi k R1 R2. This is the expression of the resistance in the case of a sphere. So just we have gone through the application of the sphere heat conduction equation in the different different radial and the plane wall cases in the next class we will study that what is the concept of log mean area log mean area can be utilized in order to convert a radial system into plane wall system and so as to 
reduce the complexity in the calculation so far the evaluation of the heat flux and the other quantities of the thermal resistances are concerned. For a practicing engineer working on soft flow, all the time the calculation required for the system is supposed to be cumbersome. And by utilizing the principle of this log mean area, you can easily convert a radio system to a plane. This is one of the important aspects.